You are listening to the Foreign Policy Focus Podcast. We cannot wait for the final proof. The smoking gun it could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Haven't you driven enough people from their homes over bulldoze their villages, seize their property under laws they had no part in making? Now working in Libya with friends and allies, we've demonstrated what collective action can achieve in the 21st century. Now the host of the show, Kyle Inslee. This is episode 246 of the Foreign Policy Focus podcast. I have a really cool guest on today's show, going to be talking about just a little bit of a different topic than the usual uh, current you know, news and events in foreign policy. And my guest today is actually uh, the man's music you heard in the introduction. That is Matt Bankert. He is a musician, and his website is uh, just his name, Matt Bankert, M-A-T-T-B-A-N-K-E-R-T.com. Matt, welcome to the show today. Thanks so much for having me, Kyle. It's a real pleasure. I, I appreciate that you uh, think I'm a cool guest. I think this is definitely a, a cool podcast. I'm looking forward to it. Well, if I get one feedback on my show other than, you know, when people tell me they like it, it's that my show is just very depressing. So I think on today's <laughs> show, it's going to be a little bit less depressing. Uh, it's a Friday, got something a little bit lighthearted going into the weekend, not uh, just talking about dead children all the time. And you know, we're going to be talking about music. Uh, you know, I'm not like a huge music guy. And half the time I talk to people about music and uh, they're into all kinds of genres of music I've never even heard of. But I do know that, you know, kind of throughout the anti-war movement, uh, you know, going back to Vietnam era in the U.S., music has been a very important part of popular culture that has driven music. Uh, you know, just uh, now I was listening to Mance Raider's interview of Angela Keaton and Scott Horton. And they were both discussing how, you know, they were getting their starts on pirate radio stations and were both part of the punk rock scene. And, and that seems to be very important to both of their developments as far as becoming anti-war. Uh, so, Matt, I guess, you know, I think you're going to take us on like a little bit of a, maybe tour our timeline of some of the anti-war music. So maybe go back to some of the pre-Vietnam era or Vietnam era songs that, uh, you know, kind of rallied Americans and. Uh, you know, went against the, you know, the mainstream establishment narrative that you know, America is the world superpower at that time going around the world to fight communism. Yeah. Um, the, there's, there's so much to talk about because music is such a, such a powerful cultural phenomenon. I think, I think you're so right in talking about, uh, that especially the Vietnam era, there was a big cultural shift where, um, you talked about the establishment narrative where, in um in the 60s there was a big uh cultural revolution where the establishment began being questioned and that just happened to coincide with the Vietnam War and people questioning a lot of things and um there was the in music there was the British invasion and rock and roll was in full force which you know started up in the 50s so you have all these things kind of converging and out of that comes a lot of uh great music um really expressing people's experiences where your your podcast and your um the people you interview you're so good at um the analysis and the hard facts and all the things that go into foreign policy and war music as a creative medium i think really can move people in a way that just the uh the analysis and the facts can't because music really expresses people's experiences um it has a great power i think to capture the hearts and minds of people um, and sometimes the promoters of war can get a hold of that and create pro war music. But, uh, very often, like, like we're talking about in the fifties and sixties and seventies, the protesters of war took hold of that power of music to, um, to try to bring about peace and to, um, to express, uh, the very human side of war, such as how soldiers are affected in war, how the people at home feel disillusioned about things. And, um, I find all that very, uh, very powerful and, uh, moving. I don't know if you have any comment on that before I get into the specifics. Yeah. Well, I, I guess you make a good point in there that not only has music been used as a part of the anti-war movement, uh, but also there is a lot of pro-war music. Uh, you know, it kind of reminded me of the South Park ep episode where, you know, the, you know, the I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll where all the country music guys are kind of the flag waving. Uh, they knocked down our towers. We're going to go get Saddam for it. Uh, yeah. And then you also at the same time did have 
uh, you know, a, a amount of popular music figures, uh, but also uh, just m- more, uh, you know, other rock and roll or punk rock, uh, grunge metal type people who are very against the war and who, who are using that for their uh, and, and within their music as well. So I do think that's a good point. Uh, but let's get into some of the actual songs here, because I know you, you had uh, uh, quite a few that you want to talk about. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll start out with um, with, a, I think, a hidden gem that I think at least many people in the U.S. are not aware of. And this this is kind of pre-Vietnam War, but um, or at least, you know, what? actually I think this this album came out, I think, around the time the Vietnam War was in full force. But it's not about Vietnam. It's actually about world war one and it's by a band that people probably recognize the kinks and the kinks are famous for their song lola and you really got me but um this album by the kinks is called arthur and it's sort of a concept album i believe it was written originally written for some tv show in in britain that didn't um didn't end up being aired but the the um the album is about a world war one veteran in, in britain and it's not overtly anti-war in all places but really what it does is it it just goes through this man's experience as he um as he is in the war he's in the military and then he grows older and kind of becomes disillusioned with his life um i think the best song on there especially in terms of um of expressing the human side of war is called some mother's son and it's kind of a soft ballad. It's very heartbreaking. And I think um, it's something that most could relate to, but I'll just read some of the lyrics. Um, it says two soldiers fighting in a trench. One soldier glances up to see the sun and dreams of games he played when he was young. And then his friend calls out his name. It stops his dream. And as he turns his head, a second later, he is dead. Some mother's son lies in a field back home. They put his picture in a frame that all dead soldiers look the same. Just talking about how every every man that fights and dies in a war is some mother's son, and he is um, maybe a brother to someone or a husband to someone or a father. And um, there is a huge cost when you lose someone you love. Um, another song on there um, is called Mr. Churchill Says, and it's just, it's, it's sort of amusing. Uh, the kinks are just kind of, kind of an amusing whimsical band they uh, i really love their their songs and their songwriting but that song just kind of it lists churchill and then a bunch of other political leaders and it just kind of goes through all these exhortations the leaders give to the people saying you know we've got to fight fight the bloody battle till the very end about world war one you know just telling them all to, to buck up and you know um stick out your chest that sort of thing um then there's another song on there called uh, uh, kind of about being in the military called yes, sir, no, sir. And um, it's just sort of about kind of being in the military and being a drone and you can't think for yourself. You're kind of told what to do. Uh, Some of the lyrics go, yes, sir, no, sir. Permission to speak, sir. Permission to breathe, sir. What do I say? How do I behave? What do I say? And so you see there's just kind of this this unthinking person going, uh, a a member of the military, um, or at least that's how he felt. so that um, that's an excellent album, I think, um, Arthur by the Kinks, and that one focuses on World War I. Um, that came out in um, maybe 1970 or 69, something like that. Um, I could go through a few more for the uh, kind of the Viet- Vietnam era, but um, uh, there's, a, there's a wonderful song people are probably familiar with called War. It's by Edwin Starr, kind of a, a, a funky Motown number. It's uh, easily recognizable uh, war. Good God, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. That sort of thing. Um, and that's a, that's a really wonderful, powerful song. Um, I'll focus now for a second on Bob Dylan. I I am a huge Bob Dylan fan, so I don't want to um, be too biased. But he has some just outstanding anti-war songs, um, and he's not he's not uh kind of a beat you over the head type of person he's much more subtle in how he approaches his um his lyrics when he's criticizing something which i think makes it that much more powerful um maybe among his best anti-war songs um is with god on our side i I, and i believe this one is actually written 
just prior to Vietnam. And the wonderful thing about it is it really goes through all of American history and kind of just is disillusioned with all of the wars. Um, even it even mentions the Spanish American War and the Civil War. Um, when it gets to World War One, um, Bob sings, Oh, the first world, world war boys, it closed out its fate. The reason for fighting, I never got straight, but I learned to accept it, accept it with pride. For you don't count the dead when God's on your side. And then he goes on to the second world war. Uh, when the second world war came to an end, we forgave the Germans and we were friends, though they murdered six million. In the ovens they fried. The Germans now too have God on their side. And, um, and he goes on and on. Then he talks about the Russians, how, you know, then, uh, if we have a war, we need to, uh, you know, it's the Russians we need to fight. And, um, and, and so it just goes on and on about how we, we always have this mentality that whatever war we're fighting, it's the right war. It's a war be- uh, we're justified because we have God on our side. The other side does not have God on their side. And, um, and it also kind of talks about how it doesn't always make sense the alliances we make. As he kind of alludes to, we were allied with the Russians during World War II, and then during the Cold War, we were at odds with them. We were at odds with the Germans in World War II, and then after World War II, we were friends with them. So he just kind of uh, subtly um, but very powerfully points out some of the inconsistencies and in how these things just don't seem to make a lot of sense to normal people. Um, and then, of course, he has some great songs, uh, some other great songs. Um, Masters of War is a great one condemning, um, the military industrial, prof- uh, um, the military industrial complex. And then, um, also Blowing in the Wind is a- another song he's, he's well known for. I didn't know if you, if you had any comments on, on any of those so far. No, I, I mean, it's really great. And I'm, I'm really just enjoying listening and, and getting this lesson. I, I think. You know, especially in the case when you're pointing out where, you know, they're singing about how everybody in war is a mother's son. And, and you know, I, I could say that on my show, but when it's a- around all the fats and everything, I, I think it's just so dry to people that they try to intellectualize it away. And they say, oh, there's mo- mothers on the other side, too, or something like that. But when, like, you're probably caught up in the emotion of a song, you know, something like that could actually maybe sink in that kind of concept that, like... The, the people on the other side are people. You know what I mean? All the people that are dying mm-hmm. are people here. And uh, it, it's a very important thing that, uh, you know, everybody should remember and think about uh, when, when they're, you know, thinking about, you know, should we go to war? Should we stay in war and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think um, along with that, I could I could comment there. There's another I mean, some other great songs from that era. Um, Pete Seeger wrote this song, Where Have All the Children Gone? Or I'm sorry, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? I had that wrong. Um, which is a beautiful song just about, uh, again, it's, uh, it talks about the human side of things. Where, where have all the husbands gone? And then you eventually find out, oh, they, they've become soldiers, but then where have all the soldiers gone? They've gone to the graveyard and how all of these, uh, all of these soldiers were husbands and, and they're gone. Um, then, um, of course, uh, Credence Clearwater Revival has their classic song, Fortunate Son, from this era where uh, the, the one of the verses goes, some folks inherit star-spangled eyes. Oh, they send you down to war. And when you ask them, how much should we give? Oh, they only answer more, more, more. And uh, so they're, they're also uh, not very pleased with the Vietnam War. Um, Born in the USA, the classic. Bruce Springsteen song even comments on on Vietnam, just talking about how uh, this this soldier fought in Vietnam and then he he loved a woman in Saigon, but um, but uh, uh, she's still here, but he's all gone. And so how you know he starts this relationship, but then he did he didn't make it out. Um, curiously, in my analysis, and I'm no expert on this, but it seems to me like there's sort of a lapse. After Vietnam, uh, there was sort of a lapse in in uh, in anti-war mu- uh, music, at least in the in the mainstream. Um, and I wonder if one of those reasons is because um, the wars that were fought. I mean, maybe the wars weren't as hot as Vietnam, but there were still military um, military things going on. 
that uh, were just less overt and just not as as well known. Um, I think certainly in the 70s and 80s, there were things like the like punk and metal that came along. And uh, there's certainly some uh, some great uh, anti-war punk songs, um, bands like The Clash and others. Um, and then s- certainly on the metal side, um, you have a band like Metallica has their classic song uh, One, which is about a, a soldier who's basically had all of his limbs blown off in, in war and just the, the, the horror of that. There's another song they have, um, Disposable Heroes, um, from the eighties. And that's, uh, that's just a really, a great song, very powerful about how, um, the, the refrain that keeps going over and over is, is back to the front. Do as I say, that sort of thing. You know, um, yeah, basically, uh, I was born for dying, that sort of thing. Um, where these these soldiers just don't have any life of their own. They're basically just there to be disposed of. Um, and then, um, of course, uh, Megadeth, also from that era, also has some great songs. Holy Wars is about uh, wars in the Middle East. And then uh, Rust in Peace um, is about, um, I guess, uh, biological warfare or maybe nuclear warfare and um, how he hopes that one day the warheads will all rest in, uh, rust in peace. So, um, uh, but th- that's, that sort of stuff I think was more for like a, a niche market. I don't know that a lot of that stuff made it into the mainstream. I think the eighties was mainly concerned with, with hair bands and, you know, picking up girls and that, that, that's those sort of messages in the music. Um, but then I think the, um, the, the anti-war, uh, music, uh, genre really got a gift, uh, a very bittersweet gift in, um, the Iraq war of 2003. That, that, uh, formed a huge explosion for anti-war music for which I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, and one, one very, uh, important album that comes to mind is, um, Mesmerized by System of a Down. They have a, just a great song on there called BYOB, which I am told stands for Bring Your Own Bombs. And, um, they, there's some great lines in there. Uh, why don't presidents fight the war? Why do they always send the poor? Just very scathing, very, um, it's a great song too. Um, and then of course, um, American Idiot by Green Day, that whole album. I think that was Green Day's first really any kind of political statement. And they'd already been around for quite a while by the time that came out. Um, and, um, that I guess, uh, shocked them into, into standing up against, um, the, the Iraq war and, and all the sort of things that went with it. Um, so that was the Iraq war, I guess. I guess I could say, um, uh, and nowadays there's, I think there's a lot of really good anti-war music out there. I could, um, I could point out two of my favorites. Um, one of them is the band Thrice. They just, came put out an album a couple years ago called to be everywhere is to be nowhere. And on it, there's some, some great anti-war songs. One is called black honey, sort of, it's sort of a, um, a metaphor about getting mixed up in the, the, the middle East black honey kind of symbolizing oil. Uh, another one is called blood on the sand. And um, I just love the, just how raw the the chorus is there's no metaphor there's no covering it up he just he just plainly says i'm so sick of this basically just saying i'm so sick of all these wars in the middle east all this blood on the sand i'm just really sick of it and i i just love that um and then there's another great song um uh death from above which is about uh drones and so that's um that's thrice that album is um to be everywhere is to be nowhere and then speaking of drones, another one of my current favorites is the Drones album by Muse. And Muse is just an awesome band. They, um, they're sort of kind of a space rock, art rock band from Britain. Um, a lot of great music, but their, um, recent album Drones, I think it's from 2015. It's about what you think. It's about the unmanned aircraft that the, the military uses for assassinations and, uh, surveillance, that sort of thing. But it, um, it kind of does a play on words in that it, um, some of the songs are about the unmanned aircraft. Some of the songs are about just sort of 
everyday citizens as drones that just kind of buy into everything and believe what they're told and go along with it. Um, sometimes there's a song called Psycho, which, um, which is about a member of the military who he is, he keeps being told that he's just a drone and he needs to do what he's told. Um, and he needs to learn to be a psycho, um, in order to, um, do his work in the military. Um, and there's just a great song called Reapers, which is about the, the Reaper drones on there. So, uh, the album Drones by Muse is another really good, uh, contemporary one. So I think that's, that's, that's sort of my brief tour of anti-war music in the past 50 years or so. Yeah. I mean, there's some fantastic songs in there. Uh, Fortunate Son, uh, is a one that I liked and actually, uh, a podcast I was listening to earlier today, uh, Mads Blumenthal and Ben Norton, their show Moderate Rebels, uh, they were interviewing a veteran. I forget the guy's name. I apologize. Uh, but you know, he was basically talking and they had a discussion about how in Vietnam, you know, aside from like, you know, the rich kids not getting drafted or having like the college exemptions, uh, you know, a lot of the like well connected kids who did go to the military were officers. And, you know, in, in kind of John McCain like positions, they would get to go to the Air Force. Now, John McCain happened to be, sh- you know, happened to get shot down, but, you know, they were in relative safety. You know, they would drop, uh, uh, you know, thousands of bombs on defenseless, you know, civilians. And, and then it was mm-hmm. the soldiers who would go in afterwards and, and you know, be, be killed. And so, you know, these were kind of the expendable type people that were killed while, you know, the, the John McCain types and the well-connected people from good families, uh, were able to bolster, you know, their ranks in the militaries and move on. Uh, the, the song one by Metallica was something that I listened to a lot growing up and in high school. Uh, that was something I really enjoyed. There's just a couple more, uh, anti-war songs. I just wanted to mention that, uh, I had enjoyed uh, for my listeners Hero of War by Rise Against uh is one that I really like um and you know Rise Against is a band <laughs> I kind of been disappointed by them because under the uh Bush administration they were even refusing to perform in the US because of the war in Iraq and uh the song one in the music video by them is actually like kind of a direct message towards Bush they portray him as being you know kind of uh, this little boy trying to play in daddy Sam bots, except, you know, it's with everybody's life, uh, mm-hmm. that he's doing that. Uh, War Pigs by Ozzy Osbourne, uh, is another one that <laughs> just came into oh, my mind. Yeah. It was a, oh, a, yeah. a favorite of mine. And then, uh, there's one more I was going to mention, but I forgot. But, uh, Matthew, before we wrap up, I did want to just get into a little bit the, the process of writing music when it's for a cause like this. Um, you know, it, oh, the other person I was going to mention actually was Lupe Fiasco. Uh, and I do like a lot of his songs. Mm-hmm. And there are some, you know, mentions of, uh, you know, uh, you know, the anti-war messages in his raps. Uh, but to get into <laughs> back to my question, uh, basically what I was just going to ask you is, you know, what is it like to write, you know, music for a cause and not just writing about, uh, you know, most of modern rap is just, you know, I do these drugs. I, I kill these people. I sleep with these women. Uh, you know, Taylor Swift complains about her most recent bad date. And, uh, you know, the, all these kind of messages are coming out. Songs are kind of, you know, kind of seems silly, but, uh, then, you know, I, I've listened to some of your music and in there, you do like, you know, not only write good music, but you also, you know, have a, a very message and a very, you know, like well put together message behind it. So what, what's that process like? Oh, wow. Well, um, <clears throat> thank you. Yeah. I, I, uh, it's hard to put into words, I guess. I, I guess I just, um, I love being creative. And as I was kind of saying at the, the outset, music, um, as I've just kind of toyed with it and, and, and played with it over the years and, and writing lyrics, um, it really helps me express what I'm thinking or what I'm going through or, or certain, um, certain feelings I have, certain attitudes I have about a, a subject, um, or certain things I'm convicted about. It's a great outlet for really getting my feelings out. And once I have written a song, I've finished the lyrics or finished the music and put it all together, it's such a, a satisfying feeling. I don't know that I could really describe it that to just feel just a sense of completion for that, that I can look at that and say, Oh, I'm proud of that. And that, that really is what I wanted to say. 
So a lot of the messages you're you're hearing in my songs are, are just things I just feel passionately about, um, whether it's about government overreach um, or um, just about how people mistreat each other. Um, I, I mean, I, I just write about the stuff that I know. Some of it is, is spiritual stuff that I write about. Um, some of it, I just, I mean, I write about relationships, uh, relationships, I guess are pretty easy to write about. I mean, we all, we all have them. So we all, uh, relationships are always very interesting. So it's always a lot of good material, but certainly issues of war are so, so powerful and, um, bring out a lot of passion in me. So I, um, yeah, I, I just, nothing really kind of makes me emotional or just gives me strong feelings than, than a lot of these wars that have just gone awry. And so to be able to write about that, um, and, and, uh, get those, those feelings out into a song and to maybe express my heart in that way. Um, my hope is that people could hear that and kind of, kind of get an inkling of how I feel and then maybe also relate to that and experience that for themselves. So that's sort of my, uh, what I think about in, in making music. Well, I, I mean, I really appreciate that you do it because, you know, I, I could keep, continue to put together podcast episodes and, you know, the reporting that a lot of these great journalists do is important, but I think there is a, a large number of people who are just never going to sit down and read and listen to what they need to le- read and listen to. That's just, you right. know, news story and reporting on the Yemen war, on the war in Syria, on the war in Libya. But if through music you could explain to them and have them take a general anti-war position and just, you know, rather than the, the feeling of war being like, yeah, let's go get them where the best, the, the feeling of war being, this is a really terrible thing that we're thinking about doing. And we need to, you know, take real care when making that decision and, uh, you know, shifting that mindset and shifting that attitude is so important. So if you do have people, you know, within your, uh, you know, life that you know, won't listen to my show or won't, you know, read whatever article that, you know, that Gareth Porter or Andrew Coburn writes that's absolutely brilliant on Yemen, uh, then share a song with them. Share, you know, one by Metallica or something like that and say, you know, take the time. Try to really listen to the lyrics and see if you, you know, uh, maybe pick up, you know, kind of message that they're trying to explain. So, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, I, I sign off here, Matthew, if you have anything else to add, if not, just tell my audience where they can find your music. And uh, I'll link to everything in the show notes page. That way, you know, it's really easy for everyone to find. Thanks, Kyle. I really appreciate that. And and I could just just add to that what you just said. I, I um, yeah, I appreciate that. I think another great thing about music is that um, it has it has lyrics that convey a message. But there's also just um, there's a tune, there's music to it, there's melody, there's instruments. And a lot of times people just kind of want that sound they just want that kind of music and that can kind of serve as a trojan horse in a way to kind of get the the message in um and um yeah i think you, you know i will i will give a little shout out there was one song that i left off that you know i normally wouldn't care about forgetting a song but this song this is one song everybody should really listen to it's called political science by randy newman came out in 1972 and it's, I don't think it's about any war in particular, but uh, this is, this is Randy Newman. We're talking Toy Story. He wrote that song for Toy Story. Uh, you've got a friend in me. We're talking Buzz Lightyear and, um, and Woody. And, uh, but he wrote this absolutely wonderful, scathing, satirical song about, um, foreign policy. And, and I'll just, uh, read a couple of the lyrics here. Um, he says, we give them money, but are they grateful? No, they're spiteful and they're hateful. They don't respect us. So let's surprise them. We'll drop the big one and pulverize them. Asia's crowded and Europe's too old. Africa's far too hot and Canada's too cold. And South America stole our name. Let's drop the big one. There will be no one left to blame us. So Political Science by Randy Newman. Please go listen to that song. Um, Other than that, I'll just say uh, thanks again, Kyle, for having me on. Um, You can visit me at my website mattbanker.com and just for listeners of your show if you go to mattbanker.com slash kyle then you can get a free song 
I will put a, an extra free song just for listeners of your podcast. It's mattbanker.com slash Kyle. But um, I, um, I'm also on Twitter at Sonic Bankert, S-O-N-I-C Bankert. And um, I'm at facebook.com slash Matt Bankert. And I have a YouTube channel as well. I have plenty of uh, videos up there. Um, listeners of your show might appreciate my song, uh, Send in the Tanks. I have that. There's a video for that up there of me uh, recording it and performing it. Um, also, I have music for sale. I have, uh, I think, like 12 or 13 songs now. You can purchase on Amazon. You can purchase on iTunes, Google Play. Just look up my name, Matt Bankert. And uh, those are all for um, download there. And uh, other than that, thanks a lot for having me on. This has been uh, a great privilege. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and definitely check out Matt's music. Uh, I've listened to quite a bit of it. I, I really enjoy it. And, um, you know, I'm everybody has different music tastes, but I'm sure there's somebody, uh, a few of my listeners out there that has similar music tastes and uh, will enjoy some of this music uh, for the show. Like I said, we're going to link to a whole bunch of stuff on the show notes page. So that can be found at foreignpolicyfocus.libsyn.com or libertarianinstitute.org. My website is immersionnews.com, uh, patreon.com slash foreign policy focus. If you want to donate to the show, Twitter at K Y A A A L E and Facebook is libertarian union.